As Stuart number four, model steam engine restoration. This is part five, modifying the eccentric rod and setting the valve timing. The way that the eccentric rod's been made on this engine is a bit strange. It's just a thin piece of sheet metal, which in turn has been riveted to the eccentric strap. But it looks okay, so I'm not going to modify that. What I'm going to do is drill a bigger hole in the end of it and bush it with a piece of phosphor bronze. I'm drilling a hole a quarter of an inch in diameter in the end of the rod. And now I'm going to make a phosphor bronze bush to fit in this hole. And in this clip, I'm taking a measurement across the widest part to see what diameter I need to make the phosphor bronze bush. Obviously the middle part of the bush will be a quarter of an inch in diameter to go through the hole, but the outer part needs to be the same size as the eccentric strap. And off we go. The lathe operations are very routine and the more you do them, the more routine they become. You've seen this many, many times in these videos. Same thing, just a different part and a different piece of metal. So what I'm currently doing is turning the outside diameter to match the width of the eccentric strap and then I will turn down a lesser diameter to fit through the quarter of an inch hole. But for the moment I'm using the micrometer to make sure that the external diameter matches the eccentric strap perfectly. And you will notice when I use the micrometer I'm only testing a little bit at the end of the piece of metal. So once I reduce the small test area to the correct diameter then I machine all the way down the work. And now I'm turning the quarter of an inch diameter part. Because I turn quite a lot of quarter inch diameter shafts, I have a good idea when I'm getting close to quarter of an inch. But I test it frequently. But this time, rather than using the micrometer, I'm using the eccentric strap itself to make sure that the part that I'm turning down fits into the hole in the eccentric strap itself. And as with the micrometer, so that I don't make a mess of it, I just turn the end part and do a test fit on that first before turning all the way down. This time when I test the fit with the eccentric strap, it's a good fit, an interference fit, but I don't want it to be an interference fit. If it's too tight, when I press the bush into the eccentric strap, it's going to reduce the whole diameter in the middle. So what I'm going to do is make it a nice easy fit and use some Loctite 603. And once again, as you've seen many, many times before, I centre drill the work, followed by a twist drill, which is one imperial size less than the hole I finally require. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to say that I think some people are getting a little bit confused with this. If you are threading a hole, you need to use two imperial drill sizes under for an ME thread. For instance, if you want to tap a hole to accept a bolt or stud that has an ME thread of 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, you need to always use two imperial drill sizes less than the size of the bolt. Two imperial drill sizes less than 5 16 is 9 30 seconds of an inch. If you want the exact numbers, then you need to look them up in the model engineer's handbook or something similar. I've just reamed this hole in the centre of the phosphor bronze bush, and it's 5 30 seconds of an inch, using a 5 30 seconds of an inch reamer, but it's too small. So here is a top tip. Proper engineers and experts, please look away now. This is a very old reamer. I think I got it in 1985, and it's done quite a lot of reaming. And it's not as sharp as it once was, a bit like me. But if you run a carbide tip tool down the cutting surfaces, like you see here, on the edge of the cutting surfaces, should I say, this will raise a slight burr on the cutting edge, which will cause the reamer to cut oversize. And it's not a permanent fix, this burr will disappear soon enough. Just long enough to ream the hole you want to the correct size. What you should really do is throw this reamer in the bin and buy another one, but such is life, it works, so I can continue using it for a while yet. I'd love to say this was my original tip, but it's something I read in Model Engineer many, many years ago, and it's accredited to Lillian Lawrence, or LBSC. So if you're using old and blunt reamers, this definitely works. And now, thanks to that top tip, I have a perfect 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter hole down the centre of the phosphor bronze bush. In this clip, I'm using a drill shank to make sure that the phosphor bronze bush doesn't drop into the chip tray. I've reversed the bush in the chuck, and I'm just cleaning up the front of the work to make sure that it's the right thickness to fit in the valve fork accurately. Now what I need to do is drill the other piece of phosphor bronze to form a large washer that fits over the other side. And normally what I would have done is put a long stick of phosphor bronze in the chuck and machined all the parts out of that. 
but this is the only small piece of phosphor bronze that I have in the workshop, so I had to remove it and put it back in the chuck. And it's running accurately enough for what I'm doing anyway. This part of it, after all, is only a washer, and here I'm parting it off, not forgetting to remove the sharp edges using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. And I'm using the reamer here to just catch the washer because I don't want this to go into the chip tray because I'll probably never find it again. Here are the parts on the bench, and once again using some wet or dry sandpaper, I'm cleaning up the ends of both the phosphor bronze bush and the washer so that they both fit accurately in the valve fork on the valve spindle. Time now for a test fit. Here's the valve fork, and here is the phosphor bronze washer fitted on the end of the eccentric rod. And in this clip, it was a little tight. It's always very important to remember that oil needs to get to the cross pin, and if it's so tight, it's not going to let the oil through and something's going to go wrong. So it's back onto the wet or dry sandpaper just to take off a little bit more material. The second test fit was perfect, and I'm now using some Loctite 603, or should I say Bond Lock 603, which is very similar, to both fix the phosphor bronze bush into the hole in the eccentric rod. And here I'm using a small spring clamp to hold the parts in place until the adhesive cures. And now the time has come to set the valve timing. I've temporarily put the pin in the hole, and as you can see it's a good fit, and there's plenty of oil in there as well. And what I'm doing is I'm setting the position of the eccentric sheave at 90 degrees to the crank web. As you can see the crank web is vertical, and the allen key is at 90 degrees to the crank web. And now I'm rotating the crankshaft by using the flywheel, and I'm doing it wrong on purpose. You must never change direction. Always rotate the crankshaft in the right direction, and keep it that way. Don't back off to see what's happening, because there's backlash in the system. What you need to know is where the valve is opening and where the valve is closing, relative to the position of the crankshaft. I've said this many times before, and I will say it again. You require early admission of the steam or compressed air into the cylinder. If you have late admission, then everything suddenly changes direction with a clunk. The idea of early admission is the steam or compressed air cushions the reciprocating parts. This type of valve adjustment has its limitations. It's a threaded bar through a block, and it's very frustrating when you get the correct position, but the valve fork is in the wrong position relative to the eccentric rod. Either way, you should always start off with the eccentric set at 90 degrees to the crank web. And at this stage, it's permissible to make very fine adjustments to get the valve timing correct at both ends of the stroke. I'm overdoing it at the moment just to illustrate what I'm actually doing. Generally, you don't have to move this eccentric sheave very much, just a tiny amount. And when the eccentric sheave is set in precisely the right position relative to the crankshaft, as you rotate the flywheel, you will notice that the gunmetal slide valve uncovers the cast iron ports at precisely the right moment just before the piston reaches top dead centre and at the other end before the piston reaches bottom dead centre. Owing to various factors, usually down to something being wrong with the geometry, you can't always get the perfect setting. And on some very large model steam engines, such as a major beam, it's possibly a good idea to slightly retard the steam. That way you will get better slow running. But in this case, I don't want better slow running. I want it to be more like a steam locomotive. I want it to be very snappy and very powerful. But most importantly, I like my steam engines to run quietly. I see quite a few steam engines demonstrated on YouTube, and it really makes me smile. Some of them are beautifully made. They really look lovely. And they sound like a pneumatic drill. And I've seen some of them that sound more like an anti-aircraft gun from World War II. It isn't that difficult to make a steam engine run quietly if it's built to a good standard and you know what you're doing with it. At the moment I'm fitting the steam inlet flange because I'm going to give this an air test very shortly. These are the original nuts and studs that held the flange in place, but unfortunately one of the nuts has come loose on the stud. What I need to do here is put a small drop of 603 on the thread and refit the nut. Then once the 603 is cured, I'll just be able to re-tighten the nut, which will in turn tighten the stud into the hole. Did I call it a stud? I mean a pretend bolt. Same difference. What I'm going to do now is fill the glass oilers. I mentioned these superb glass oilers in the last episode, and I also put the address of where to get them from on screen. 
so if you didn't get it the first time round, have another look. It's on screen whilst I'm working on the oilers, and that's in episode 4. I've just filled the oilers with some of my special steam oil and machine oil and rapeseed oil mixture, but I never open the needle valves, because I forget to shut them and the oil all runs out. This is a bit stupid, I know, but I can put some oil into the crankshaft in the hole at the base of each oiler. But with this engine being used to generate electricity, for continuous running, I will be opening the valves. I think I put too much oil in the cylinder because most of it ran out all over the bench. So I stopped the engine and cleaned this up. Now I'm going to stop talking and just let you watch the engine running. The valve timing of this steam engine is as near perfection as possible. Admission occurs just before top dead center and just before bottom dead center. And here, this is the final tiny adjustment. Apart from a bit of side play on the crankshaft, I think this engine is sounding and running rather well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.